Hello everyone, it's 2024 and the first video I'm going to create this year is on how to integrate the EGBCA HashiCorp Vault plugin with HashiCorp Vault. For those who use Vault but want to be able to issue certs out of EGBCA, then check out this video because this is going to show you how easy this integration is to do. So without further ado, let's hop over to my EGBCA instance. I'm going to start over in our admin web. This is the container that we recently upgraded from a previous video and did the services in. So if we go down and check out services, we can see that we have those configured. And then we'll hop over to certificate profiles and we need to do some edits. Actually, we're gonna clone this TLS server profile and we'll call this guy the TLS server RSA. There we go, looking for the keys there, sorry, one year. And then we'll do create from template. And then we're gonna hop down and edit this guy. We need to make an RSA cert because the TLS certs we'll use on vault will be RSA keys. So we'll select those key sizes and then let's see, do we need, nope, that looks fine. Key usages are good. We already got server authentication. We'll leave the other settings here for the CRL and AIA OCSP. And then we'll set the management CA on this one too. Oop, there's shift, all right, and then save. And then next we'll go over to end entity profiles and then we're going to edit our TLS server profile and we're going to add some additional DNS names. So we should have a total of five and then an IP address. There we go. And we need those extra names for the vault cert that we'll see. And then we need to add our new profile into here as well. So we'll click and select that and add the management CA2. And then we'll go down and save. All right, after that, we're gonna go over and create a new role. So we'll do add, then we'll type in RA vault. There we go, we got it there. So we can just scroll down and select that. We add that, let's go edit the access rules and we're going to use the RA administrators as a can, select our sub CA, select our TLS server profile and the client one too save then we need to go over to the advanced mode and we need to enable the ca view so we'll select that by hitting allow there we go and then we can scroll all the way down to the bottom there we go save that takes us back up top we'll go to members now we'll add the match with common name and type in the name we're going to use in our RA cert. So it'll be vault-ra-01. And then add. Now we can move over to the command line. And this is where the fun's going to begin. So we'll go actually click home first. And then let's go to the command line. We're going to SSH up to the server now, which is our one we've used for the other tutorials, we'll do a list. We can see we've used the other files and everything from our other videos. We'll make a new dir called vault. We'll cd into vault. And then we're going to download the vault client that we'll use to connect to vault once we deploy it in the container. We're gonna unzip that file and then we'll just remove the zip. Next, we're gonna add environment variable to grab some of the names we're gonna use for the cluster name. They'll be used in the CSR here. And this cert comp will be used for creating the cert that Vault uses that we'll connect to over TLS. And then we'll generate a key and a CSR. And then we're gonna generate the next comp to make the API cert. This cert will be used on the ingress. So we'll generate the key and CSR for that. And the last one we're gonna generate is for the RA credential. So we'll generate another key in CSR for that. And then we're gonna cat all three of these files out. So we have them to copy and paste because we'll go over to the RA web to submit these and issue the certificates. So there's the internal one, the API, and now let's cat out the RA credential or CSR. There we go. All right, now we hop back over to the web and we're going to go to RA web 
we're going to go to make new request and we're going to select our TLS server profile and then the RSA one that we did and make sure we got management CA2 there and provided by user. Then we can go down and copy out the first CSR blob. So we'll select that and then go back to the browser and then paste that in this little area, the text area, upload. There we go, scroll down. And for the name, we'll just type the vault dash internal and then we'll scroll down and select download PEM full chain. Then we can hit the reset button. We're gonna repeat this, another TLS server profile, our RSA cert profile with the management CA, select provided by user, and we're gonna go grab the API CSR, which is gonna be used on Ingress. So we'll select this, copy it, and paste it in the CSR box. Click the upload button. And now we're gonna go down and call this credential username the api.vault. So we move down and we also look at the DNS name that we're copying from that as well. So api.vault. And then we'll do the same thing, download PEM full chain. Reset. Now the last credential is going to be RA administrator and that's gonna be provided by user two. So we'll return to the shell and get the CSR for the RA credential. So we'll select that and then paste it in the text box and then upload CSR. And then we'll go down and type the username of the vault RA01 and then download PEM full chain. All right, back to the terminal window. And then we're gonna open, we have another tab here that's in our downloads directory already. And we're gonna SCP these files. Well, we'll list them just to see. And then we're gonna SCP them up to our micro Kate server. So you can see that we're uploading the first one, but we're changing the name to a dot CRT at the end. And then the API one that we'll call server cert. And lastly, the vault credential or the RA admin one and making that go up as well. So then we're up here and we're gonna cat out the vault credential or the RA credential one. And we're going to use that to grab the management cert out of there so we can throw that in a separate file. So we'll select that text blob there for the management cert. And then we're gonna use Vim to create the file management CA.CRT. And we're gonna paste the contents in here. And then we're gonna right quit, colon right quit. There we go. And then we're gonna pull down the TLS chain for our other CAs that Anton had built in the prior videos, and then we're going to cat the management CA into the end of that file, which will give us the whole trust chain of our elliptic curve chain and the management CA. So we can cat that and we can see that we've got one RSA and the other two elliptic curve sub and root. We'll create the namespace for vault. We're going to add the config maps for our certs. There we go, last one. So we've added one for the ingress, the one that Vault's going to use, and then our RA credential. And then we're gonna do the Helm repo add. Actually, I take that back, we didn't do the RA credential yet. That one's coming up. All right, we had the repo. We can see there we'll deploy Vault 1.15.2. So now we'll curl down a override YAML file I did for all the settings. We've got that in GitHub. And now we're gonna deploy Vault with a three node instance using our overrides. And that'll deploy and we can check out that the pods are going, cool. And what's happening now is when the pods start up, they're going to be compiling the eGBCA plugin. Vault will be in a state that we need to actually initialize it. Take a look at where we're at, describing. There we go, so now it's sealed true. We're ready to actually initialize Vault. And we can see that they're running. And now we will initialize vault and it'll take the master keys and throw them in that cluster-keys.json file. Vault's now initialized and now we have to unlock the instance. 
and then we're going to have to join the other two instances to the vault cluster since it's a three note cluster. So we're gonna export the three keys here that we need to unlock out of the five. Now we'll go through and unlock these. So we do two, three, it's still sealed. It's no longer sealed. That's what we wanna see. So now the first instance unlocked. So now we need to connect to the second instance and we're gonna join this to our first instance of the vault cluster. So join true, then we exit. And now we're gonna unlock this instance Run that again because it's still sealed. Sometimes I've had trouble where you run these three and it doesn't go, so you just run the last one again. That one's unsealed. Now we're gonna join the third instance. And then we can exit out of that and we need to unlock this one too. And then we'll, there, same thing. Okay, we're good. Then we're gonna unset those keys so we don't need those anymore. And now we can actually log in with a root token. So we'll log in. And then we're going to get the SHA-256 hash of the EGBC vault plugin. And then we can add that to vault. Whoop, forgot the K there, so let's add that and try that again. There we go, success. And then we're gonna grab the cluster IP address. We need to add that to the host file, so that way we can connect to vault. So let's look at the hosts, now we've got our IP of the 2.40 that we're going to connect over to when we use that. There. Okay, now we're all set. So we got the API vault there. Excellent. Now we're going to export out the two variables so we can connect to vault with that client we downloaded. Then we log in. So now we're actually connecting to vault through the ingress over there. And we're going to add the config to vault to point the EGBCA plugin to EGBCA. Add that. But we'll look at that so we can see the config that's been added and it tells it how to point to EGBCA. And now we'll add the role side for issuing the certs. And it pops out all this information from creating that side. And at this point, we're now ready to issue certificates through vault from EGBCA. So we can issue one as simple as that. There's our first cert. We'll do a second one and change some of the formatting of the PEM there with the options. And then the last one, and there we have it. It's that simple to end up issuing certs. And then we can do the Helm uninstall to free up the resources like that. And what's great is that now that it's stopped and we undeployed it with Helm, if we go to redeploy with the Helm chart again, all the data is still there in those persistent volume claims so you can be able to power this on and off for testing and not have to use up all the resources on my little VM like this so I can do other tutorials. So that wraps up the video of how easy it was to get EGBCA working with the Vault plugin and being able to leverage Vault for issuing all of your certificates out of the proper PKI. All right guys, have a great one and we'll see you in the next video we do.